Hello and welcome to Unique You Trust, Tattoo and Art Culture in San Fernando Valley, bringing you the, who's the latest in the tattoo scene. I am your host, Anthony Sanchez. Today we're going to talk to Hector Santos from Needle Pushers in Balboa Park. Thank you for coming by the studio. Thank you for having me. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about podcasts. What podcasts are you listening to? Um, the top three right now that I'm listening to is the usual. I mean, a lot of people listen to it. It's just Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. Experience, uh, Joey Diaz, The Church of What's Happening Now, and uh, what's it called? The other one is between uh, Tom Segura and his wife, Christina Pazinski, in uh, your mom's house. and uh, <laughs> Or uh, if it's not that one, it's uh, Fighter and the Kid with Brandon Schaub and Brian Callen. It's just a lot of comedy stuff. I like listening to a lot of like life stories of what's going on in people's... I mean, I do that already Like while I'm tattooing. I'm kind uh -huh. of like a cheap therapist, I guess. Like <laughs> People come at me and just tell me random stories or... They're kind of intrigued of like what a life in a tattooer's day is or something like that, you know. Uh huh. And I let them know, you know, it's not all like not every not every like tattooer is uh like yeah hey, I'm I made this much money I'm gonna go out to the bar and <laughs> blow it off and then start all over again at zero tomorrow. And some of us are just like, you know, Renny like we're just dads or moms. We're just doing, you know, we're glorified plumbers, I mean, in a way, from what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, hey, that's the guy that does my tattoos, man. He's an awesome dude. So, you know, I'm just here, man, just doing my thing every day, trying to keep balance in my life, just working out, you know, doing, trying to keep a steady balance on family life, tattooing life, and whatever, you know, what, just trying to be happy all around. That's all it is. Uh, you've mentioned before how Needle Pushers is like just one of those places where lots of walk-ins, right? Yeah, man. We've been there about almost, I think, 20 years. I think the first time I ever heard about Needle Pushers, I must have been in ninth grade back mm -hmm. in like 2000, I think, 2000. And uh, one of my buddies uh, had just gotten a tattoo, and he's like, yeah, come get tattooed over here in my friend's shop. He just opened up, and he had this whole like back like the top of his back he got like in graffiti writing like his his last name and i was like whoa like that was kind of like the first time i ever saw someone i'm like oh kids in high school get tattoos already huh i've been always i've always seen tattoos since i was like 12 but you know they they were like hood tattoos and like gangster dudes that are doing it in the garage and stuff like that so yeah i was gonna say, I was gonna say yeah. it's probably, probably a garage thing definitely uh, definitely a garage or thing private from, like, studio i've been told yeah yeah private like, studio private you know so. I got, you could always come and get a little <laughs> little some some right here with pull out some beers and stuff you know is that how you started then did you start oh it? me uh no actually i have uh what's it called i started back in i think i must have been 20. And uh, I had just gone off of a really bad relationship and uh, I was just, I was really bummed out about it. I remember I was like for like, a, I think for a week straight, one of my buddies had me at his house. Uh, he had just gotten like a Ninja Turtles DVD like <laughs> set and he's like, here dude, like you can watch all these Ninja Turtle DVDs and I'm gonna go to work cause I was super bummed out and, was like, and I was just drinking and just watching Ninja Turtles DVDs and just drawing. And then his older brother had just came back from the Navy and he's just talking about, he's like, hey man, uh, you should tattoo me. I always see you drawing all the time. And I'm all like, I had already had like one or two small tattoos at that point. And uh, I'm all like, I never really thought about tattooing, you know, like as me doing one. I knew I always wanted to get tattooed, but me as a tat, like wanting to do tattoos was never like, had never crossed my mind. And at that point, I was still an immigrant. So I would still do, like, random jobs. I'd be, like, waiting at Home Depot. And I'm just kind of like, it's got to be a way for me to figure this thing out, like, how to get more money. But, uh, yeah, I did that tattoo. I did a really, really crappy tattoo on my friend's older brother. He was just excited to get tattooed, so he didn't care. He was just like, yeah, let's do it. And he was like, yeah. And, I'm all, and I looked at it, and I was all like, I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I should like get an apprenticeship or something. Cause I had talked to like certain, like on the first few times I went to get tattooed, I was like, how did you get into this? I think just that's what a lot of the people like ask about it, you know? And they would say apprenticeships. And I was like, okay. So I went around and 
I had painted a few things. Uh, I lived down in Orange County before I started tattooing. So my uh, one of the guys that lived next to me in Orange County, uh, he was a he was an apprentice and had just started tattooing, but he taught me how to watercolor somewhat. Cause he was kind of like a little crackhead dude too. <laughs> I, we had one of those in my neighborhood in West Coast. Yeah, yeah. He, a, he, he just was... he would always walk around the street. And yeah, be, and he would say stuff like. You either sketch or you smoke sketch. And we never, <laughs> we made fun of it all the time because we were like, what does that mean? Right. Like, it's just a crackhead thing. Yeah, right? just a little, like, dude, <laughs> he would tell me, like, random little things. Like, he's like, well, do you mind if I smoke? Because I care if you die. And I was like, that's okay. Like, yeah, it's such a crackhead thing. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't understand. Those, those don't two know. sentences don't go together. Yeah, I'm like, that's, that, I don't know. Is that a backhand? I don't know. Like, but, anyways, he was real nice, dude. And he, he taught me how to paint. And, like, Kind of taught me a lot of, like, uh, I guess what they say, traditional, like, tattoos and stuff like that. And I I always found them really cool, even though, like, I grew up in Pan Am City, and all I knew was, like, black and gray, like, gangster tattoos and stuff. Some, But I also, like, skated, and I did a lot of, like, you know, like, uh, I guess what they would say, like, white boy stuff and stuff like that. Because it was either, like, you hang out with a bunch of gangsters or you, like, hung out with a bunch of skater kids. Skating wasn't the cool thing to do back then. Okay. But, I mean, I wasn't, like, trying to fight in my neighborhood and all the time. I was just trying to have yeah. a good time, you know? But, uh, yeah, so, like, color tattoos, I'd never really seen them until I saw them in, like, certain music videos or, like, some skate videos. Some skaters had, like, one or two tattoos that they were color. So, but, yeah, it was kind of intriguing to me. So, painting, and I've always drew and stuff like that, so... That was pretty cool. So you've been drawing since you were a little kid? Yeah, like, my first the first few things that I remember was, like, I had a little buddy because I grew up in Huntington Park as well before I came to the valley. I feel like we need to, like, get a chronological of all this. I know, right? right? I'm <laughs> bouncing around, so I'm not bad, dude. Well, you mentioned yeah. that you were up since 2 a.m. or whatever. So oh, yeah, I think kind of, yeah, of I was it. tattooing last night we're, pretty late. We're, like, slumber party style right yeah, now. Yeah, we're, yeah, like, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, when I I grew up in Huntington Park for a little bit when I came from Peru. So you're which, yeah, Peruvian? I'm Peruvian. Okay. Yeah, I, I came to the States when I was two years old. Border hopped it, and I was just in uh, Huntington Park with my parents. Uh, my parents worked full-time, day and night. So uh, what's it called? And uh, when, I was, when I was younger, like, I just... The first time I remember drawing was with my buddy. He was a year older. So he was going to school, and I was like, well, I don't have my buddy anymore. I asked him, like, what should I do? He's like, well, you should draw little, like, army, like, scenes on paper. And he taught me how to do, like, a uh, little, like, uh, an army dude out of, like, stick figures and stuff like that. He taught me how to draw a tank. So then, like, I'd just sit there and draw the whole time. And I, by the time he'd get home, like, I'd have papers filled with, like, little drawings and stuff like that. His older brother had Lowrider Art Magazine, so... That's how I got into, like, cars and drawing stuff. So, like, the first things I started drawing was army figures and, like, lowrider cars. And that's all I knew for a while because I would just look at him. <laughs> then started looking at, I guess, at that time, like, his older brother started going to raves and, like, what they call, um, what are the, at, like, house parties? Uh, yeah, house parties. House parties. I, I don't know what you were going to say. Like, <laughs> it's like where they where they have, like, oh, party crews. There party crews. Yeah, party That's crews. That's what my baby brother was in. He yeah. was in a party crew. And yeah, then yeah, it, yeah. Went, it became a gang. So. Yeah, it, yeah, it started doing, like, party crew gangs and stuff like yeah. that. It was pretty funny. So he would, like, bring home all these, like, they would have these, like, big, like, par parties called, like, Narnia and stuff like that, like, Everything was about like mushrooms and all that okay. stuff. So I saw yeah, party groups used to kind of compete to have the best house party. Right. Yeah, they were yeah, kind yeah. of like so you would go to this guy's party crew party and you go to this party. I don't get it. I don't understand why Dude, there I was, was. All I remember was like about eight years old at that time. Okay. His brother was fifteen and he had a little Honda Civic, and he would take care of us sometimes. So he would tell us like, man, I gotta go to this party. Like, there's gonna be girls and stuff. Oh, and, okay, and that, it, yeah, that's probably why that's people a, were going. Exactly. <laughs> so he'd be like, we got to go, man. I, I don't care. Like, you, you're coming, but you guys are sleeping in the car. So he'd, like, take us. He'd hang out, and, like, we are just, me and him, me and his uh, younger brother, we would just be in the back of the car just sitting there, like, really little creeps and blankets and just kind of like, like, what's going on? Why are you bringing us out here, you know? <laughs> 
But yeah, that's like the earliest recollection I have of me like drawing anything. So it was, then later on, I started drawing comic books and like, I just started like mimicking whatever I saw that I draw, like, like that I could draw. And then just basically that's how me getting into all that was. Do you sell any of your drawings, paintings? Uh, like I that? do have paintings or what they call in tattooing, flash and stuff okay, like that. Okay, flash art. Yeah, yeah, flash art, and I do that. I try to get better at it, but before I was able to pump them out pretty quick. Now it takes me a little bit longer just because of, uh, you know, I have a lot more going on other than tattooing. Before, I just had, like, tattooing itself, so I was able to do more work, but now I have, like, two kids, and, you know, I got I got adult life. I got to do adult things. And How old are your kids? I have a seven-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. Oh, one-and-a-half, yeah. Yeah, That's rough. so... <laughs> it takes yeah, a while. man, yeah, so... When they when when they don't get their sleep, well, this one she she's definitely not like her older one. So yeah, when she doesn't get her sleep, she gets pretty fussy, and she'll let you know that she's over it. Like she's just like, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm not I'm not having a good time right now. I need to <laughs> you need to do something. You need to keep me entertained or something. <laughs> so yeah. Um. So what do you have any favorite uh, TV shows or cartoons growing up then? Teenage Mutant oh, Ninja Turtles you already brought oh, up. Ninja, I honestly like the I. Uh, back in the VHS days, my family wasn't like we. I wasn't a rich kid really, and all we really had was like four tapes that I would w watch on loop as a kid. Okay. It was Bambi, Little Mermaid, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Splash. Splash. Yeah. So yeah. like, I'm into romantic comedy movies. I uh, yeah, like yeah. that rom coms, cartoons, and. I remember seeing Splash as a kid in the drive-through in my dad's in our station wagon. Oh We'd, man! Uh, pile us all in the station wagon, roll it up backwards, yeah, turn on the yeah, 80, yeah. AM radio, and I think the the only scene that really did, I didn't understand as a kid was the the mermaid. Like when she, uh, when she first went into the um, spo spoilers. Anyone who has never seen it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we're in the 84, 84, no, if we're like in ninety one or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, when when they first put when he first when Tom Hanks realizes that she's a, a mermaid, the, right? He puts yeah, her yeah. In, in the bathtub. Yeah, and her yeah. Legs she, her, and... her legs flap out, and it's actually her fins. Yeah. That must have been weird. <laughs> I, I don't just, know why. I just remember. Uh, <laughs> the the Statue of Liberty part where she walks in naked and I'm just like, whoa, like that's intense. <laughs> so yeah, you had four tapes. Yeah, my oh, a lot of the tapes that we had, my grandma would record stuff from HBO or whatever. Oh no. So yeah. and I was just talking to my brother a couple of weeks ago because like there's a lot of movies in our rotation that I don't know why we watch them. Do you know what I mean? I think we did because of like you said, we just we that's only had a few had, tapes. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like, you know, Ta so. Tapes that also worked as garages for like your little matchbox cars. <laughs> so if you had, we would use them as garage or like little parts of town. We'd like use them as, I mean, when, when I had my brother when he was older, like that's what we would do. We'd play cars and build like little cities out of it and stuff. So that's how we kept each other like entertained, I guess. We used to go in the backyard and, and dig, dig little tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that too. And yeah. Stuff and yeah, yeah. I remember doing that, and messing up my uh, the what's it called, my friend's dad's lawn. He gets so mad. That was bad. That was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> we also used to. I don't know if I was a little older. We would uh, take apart our GI Joes and rebuild them into other GI Joes. Oh man, we'd have lawn wars. Lawn like wars. he'd start on on one side of the lawn, I'd start on the other with like ten GI Joes each, and then we'd kind of like clash in the middle and like. I, I remember at the ice cream truck, you could buy those little G.I. Joes with the parachutes. Yeah, the parachute guys. Yeah, so you just throw them at each other and see, like, just land and do little mm -hmm. missions and stuff. Yeah, and we didn't care if they were, if we would mix everything, too. We would have, like, our Star Wars with our G.I. Joe, yeah, yeah, with yeah. our su super friend uh, uh, Justice League characters. Justice and... <laughs> that and, uh, what's it called, the Transformers, when they had, like, full-on metal Transformers. Yeah, those were nice. So... Yeah, if you get chucked and you get hit with those, those things hurt. I do remember getting hit with <laughs> yeah, those. Yeah, those things hurt. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, do you? Ha I saw that in your in your shop. I'm like really sloppy on mic today. <laughs> uh, I saw that in your shop. You had uh, like a lot of Simpsons stuff. So was that a really oh, influential for dude, you? Dude, yeah that that ex that that show was crazy. Dude, I like I think from fourth to to like senior year of high school, I was just. Simpsons was it for me like I would I remember I would have to catch the bus 
right on time before like i think 5 30 i think was the first like to catch like a fresh new episode so i would just always be on it and try to get there to watch those episodes i was just a big fan of the simpsons just because of all like it was kind of that kind it was like fart jokes and stuff like that i love those man i think south park out does oh the man. Show and south t- park um, yeah fart south jokes, park though. South Park came out. That was just game changer right there. That just, I'm glad. I'm glad I was there for uh, South Park and Family Guy. Family Guy. Family Guy is another one too, man. And or uh, what's it? Futurama. Right. Just, yeah. Dude. Yeah. That was Futurama holds up. Oh, still. I yeah. Mean, very much. I mean, definitely the first, uh, uh, supposedly the first ten uh, seasons of Simpsons is like the the golden age. <laughs> those were the dude. Those were it. But um, all so, the Halloween ones, all the yeah, I love Treehouse of Horrors. Treehouse of Horrors and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I love doing all that Simpsons stuff. It's fun to me. Uh, I actually do little twists on them. I do like Warp Simpsons. I do like tattooed like Simpsons and all that stuff like that. Yeah, with like a traditional look to it and stuff like that. It's always fun, you know. But I mean, it's good to throw out there for people if they're yeah, into Simpsons dude, if and they're down to get, get any Simpsons tattoos. That's what everyone looks at. The first thing they look at my wall, they're like, oh, man, you like Simpsons? Do you have a favorite character in The Simpsons? Honestly, it would have to be probably, uh, dude, I think it would probably have to be, like, Sideshow Bob. <laughs> he's just a silly dude. Like, he's just such dry humor, but he, yeah. just, he just got burned on by freaking, uh, what's his name, Krusty. Yeah. Just always just treating them like dirt, dude. I, uh, Kelsey Grammer is a good sport to keep that up too, right? Kelsey to, Grammer, to, to, the oh, voice yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of Bob too. Um, yeah. Do you have a favorite way that Bob tried to murder Bart? Um, let's see. No, one is probably like, I think one episode I I I remember the most is when he tried to marry his uh, step. Uh, I mean his aunt. Yeah. That one was a good one because like he's like, oh, he maybe turned a new leaf. Like that's it. But he's just the whole time just plotting away. Yeah. But I mean, like, the, I think, yeah, Sideshow Bob and Homer, I think, were, Homer was just all about, like, what my adult life is. And as a, he just, he's just such a, like, he didn't care, you know, he's just kind of like, ah, oh, man, I gotta go to work, but I love donuts, or he just go to Moe's and stuff like that, you know, just. Have you been over here to Universal for the Oh, dude, I'm there, like, every, I'm weekly, like, some people oh, say yeah? Yeah, I have, a, like, a, a pass, so I'm just always there taking my daughter. You'll see me there every, like, Tuesday on my days off, usually. Do you like the Duff beer? Oh, the the Duff beer? I haven't tasted it, you actually. Haven't. No, no, I've been inside the Quickie Mart and stuff like that. Okay. I'm just so into that. I'm, like, I love that, and it was kind of a love-hate thing because when they turned that whole little area into the... Springfield there. I also love Back to the Future. Oh, that used to be the Back to the Future area? Yeah, so it used to be all Back to the Future right there. They used to have, like, uh, yeah, man, I just remember them that Back to the Future ride. I mean, we went, I think, when I was in sixth grade, we went there for a field trip. I mean, this is apparently back when they used to have budget for these things. So I remember the the tour, and I do remember going on the, the Back to the Future ride, but I don't remember it being a... Um, what do you call it? A Back to Future area. So maybe it was after. Yeah, no, that whole area. No, they, they did uh, like where the Quickie Mart was. They had the like where they sold the Doc on Doc Brown's Chicken Shack or something like that. Or I'm, I'm probably messing it up right now with it's Moe's uh, Tavern where they have, yeah next to it they have the Clunkin' Chicken or whatever. Okay. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, man, even like down when you go down uh, at the Universal like part. Where uh, the Mummy of the Ride is. That was an awesome ride. That's an awesome That's ride. That's one of my favorite rides. Yeah. Every, every time I take somebody there, I'm like, I kind of like World Coast. I was like, no, you'll like this you one. Gotta, yeah. You'll like this one. But that was E.T., dude. Like, that was E.T.? E- I used to love just what I love like being on the bike and you see like the whole city. Then you mm-hmm. pass by the baseball stadium. That was rad. You know? I miss the, you know, again, it was a very like, you know, not a... <clears throat> heavy uh memory but the jaws part of the of the the movie jaws? tour right it's still the stuff is still there from the you know when you do the movie tour when the you do the back lot, on the back lot, the back lot, lot yeah, tour yeah, yeah, yeah. um there i guess like the lake is still there to kind of recreate the jaws thing but the jaws does it or maybe mm-hmm. i'm no no no, no that yeah. they still have the bruce jaws the one that they use in the movie that pops up yeah, yeah. 
But they don't have the bridge. They don't have yeah. the where they filmed the Creature of the Black Lagoon. Yeah, they they switched a lot of things. But then also the lot burned down a few years back. I don't know if you know or if you remember that. I re- maybe but some of it. Yeah, burned down. I remember that they lost a lot of master tapes. But maybe that was Warner Brothers. But I don't remember. That was. A I didn't know that. That's yeah. probably yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, in high We're school... really bad at being experts today. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, I we're think... We're going to get fact-checked comments on these, like, actually. <laughs> yeah. But hey, whatever, man. Yeah, don't at me, right? Don't at me, right? <laughs> like, um, so how did you... You kind of mentioned how you got into tattoo, but then you... you oh, yeah. You, so did, stuff tangents, at, yeah. you did stuff at Clandestine, or how did how did that work? How well, did that warp into I that? also, like, I, I, after uh, tattooing, I kind of went full circle, actually, because... I tattooed, and then for a while, like, I, I went on tour with my friends uh, as a tattooer, and they were, like, playing shows around the States. Then I came back here, and, and I still tattooed for a while. I had a buddy who had opened up a shop in Hawaii. I was supposed to go with him, but then I bailed. Um, and then I just stayed here, tattooed for a while, and then uh, I... Th- for a while, I worked also in uh, Main Street Venice, and then I, uh, where else? I worked. I worked. Uh, I decided to have my own. Like I, I've, I've had my own studio. I've tattooed out of my house. I've done every kind of style of tattooing, and what works for me best is working at a walk-in shop where I just get to like, still be like. To me, it just feels like, uh, like you know, when when you're in your elective class in high school. I just felt like I never left elective class as an I'm still like an adult like in an elective class, so they call some people call it early retirement because you're still <laughs> you're still loving what you do you know so it's still pretty awesome I I love tattooing I've had my own shop uh, I had my own like tattoo barber shop that what was, was that fun like? that was fun but it was too daunting for me since I'm not like I'm more street smart than book smart. So the fact that I had to do, like, all this adult, like, paperwork stuff kind of burned me out. What was some of the stuff in case people are, like, you know... Because I think that the, the reason why I like this part of your, of your story is you get a lot of people that, that you know, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, but they don't realize they take that job. all the stuff, though. You yeah, know, like, you're right. going to make that leap. You better be passionate about it. Right. Because yeah, you got to have a passion. Yeah, definitely. You got to be passionate. And what I realized about myself is that I, like what I like is I like to have fun with what I do and the second like I remember when I was uh I had just started tattooing I was like as soon as this gets boring I'm out of here like you know and I think that's what I felt at uh when I owned my own business because my father had owned his own business so I kind of had an idea you know um what did your father do my dad was a jeweler so what he did he he sold jewelry here in the valley well, in Huntington Park, like I said, he, he was he owned his own jewelry store, and uh, then the L.A. riots happened, so they like broke into his jewelry store. That's a bummer. Looted everything, and my dad's like, we got to get out of here. I didn't realize the riots went that way. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, so it was right there in Huntington Park on Pacific. Oh, yeah. So, they, yeah, they just, just destroyed his place, took his like uh, safe, opened it up, just looted all his jewelry, and my dad was out. I remember, you know, we lived in Baldwin Park, and we didn't even know, like, we were like, should we, are we supposed to do, I mean, we were so, I mean, Baldwin Park's like 15 miles away, or not, right. it, but it, it was so scary at the time that we were yeah, like, how, it, it how crazy. serious is it going to get, because obviously we were upset, and yeah. I don't know if I have, I don't know when I need to update people about what happened in the LA riots, Dude, but. the other, it was crazy, like, I, what happened, well, in my area, um, we would go to this donut shop, and that's where we would all play, like, video arcade. Back in the day, you'd go to the donut shop, and there was a video store where you would, like, where they would have arcades and stuff. Which and games did they have? They they had a, what's it called, a, that Ninja ninja something? like Ninja Gaiden? I think it was Ninja Gaiden <clears throat> and Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. Street and, Fighter 2, right? Yeah, Street so, Fighter yeah. 2, so you would have those two games for sure almost everywhere. And, uh... I think that's the ones that we were playing, but so at, at that time, like it was kind of, it was kind of like it was kind of hectic just to walk down the street because everyone was just all crazy, like stealing everything, and right, and we would see the helicopters in the news. We'd walk outside, and it's the same helicopters just like hovering right there. We're like, hey, that's El Gallo Hito right there. Like, what the heck? Like, I live like right down the block from that. 
and uh, my dad's store was like literally on the other side of that plaza. And uh, yeah, my dad's like, dude, that's my store. He saw his own store go down in flames and just watch everyone break through his stuff and just take it all like in the news. And that's when my dad's like, hey, man, this is this is bad. Like, I got to get out of here. And one of my uncles that lived out here at the time, he's like, well, you should move out here. It's in the Valley, San Fernando. So I think it must have been like 94, I think, when I, 93, 94. And my dad decided to start again over here. And uh, he started out in Panorama City. And um, what's it called? He opened up a store right there on Nordoff and Van Nuys at that plaza. And uh, he decided, what he decided to do was he'd uh, bring LA to the Valley because it was such a long journey for people, especially the Hispanic community. They couldn't just up, like not everybody had a car and you know could do that drive to downtown LA, fix their necklace or something. So he had a buddy in downtown LA that knew how to solder and do that type of thing. So he'd have like, he's like, oh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring uh, what's it called, the downtown jewelry district to the valley, sell everything at wholesale, and also solder and weld, fix watches, do all that stuff at a good price. So that's how he made his living, and he would have me there. I've been I've been inside his, like, even when we were living in Huntington Park, like, I was at his store right after school, like, opening and closing cleaning windows. I've always been there, you know? So that's kind of like something you already have, right, like you he, know, happening. He, he taught you. me, like, really well, like, uh, you know, uh, business, kind of have, like, some business sense and be really good and cordial with people and how to talk to people because he would kind of make an incentive. He's like, hey, if you sell, like, this necklace, I'll give you this much amount of money. So it kind of gave me an incentive to be like, oh, okay, I got to hustle, you know? Like, he taught me that, how to make... Because he... That, my dad's been hustling, like, he didn't grow up with, he grew up in the poor side of Peru, so he, him and his grandfather would go sell gum at the, at the football stadiums, while my grandma worked at a sewing, like, factory, okay. is what I was told, that's how, that's how my dad, you know, started off when he was young, so, yeah, that, so he's always been hustling, so he always tried to figure out a way to make money with whatever he had, whatever means he had at that time. So yeah, that's how it started, and and basically, like when I opened up my shop, same thing, man. I was just like I, I was real young. I must have been like twenty four, I think. Yeah. I was twenty four. Uh, I mean, it was a big jump. It was scary, but uh, I figured it out like after like three years of owning it. I think it was. It was three good years. It, I made a lot of money, but it also like, I didn't really have well balanced like the my life as a father at that time I had just become like my mom says my first daughter was kind of like an angel like in disguise as in like she she gave me that drive to build my own like shop own it and you know like push myself to that next level to really like make something of myself which I I was always grateful for and you know I was luckily able to I had a lot of loyal clients and a lot of people who were always there for me to like, you know, they were like, oh, I want to get a tattoo. And like a lot of my friends that skated, a lot of my friends in the music scene, like they were always coming through. And I was never shorthanded with like people that wanted to get tattooed by me. So it was cool. Were you were you a good skater? Was, no, I was no, the worst. Skater. No, I wasn't the worst, <laughs> but like, you know, I, I just, what I, I just kept up to par, whatever, you know, I have, I have a bunch of other friends are just amazing they're pros and amateurs now so that's really awesome to see them and then i also have a friend who's like like top 50 gamer in the world right now for video street, gamer yeah, yeah for like street fighter 2 he? alpha oh really yeah yeah yeah. shout out right. to my boy uh, commander jesse nice <laughs> yeah I'm a, i i don't play i'm really bad at, at fighter games but um dragon ball fighter z i play that on my yeah. own, but it, like local. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, not on the pro yeah, dude. No, I, I did the arcade this. once, and I was, I got slaughtered. I was like, nope. <laughs> oh man, no, I had this. Like, I must have been. I think I was fifteen. I, I messed up this wrist, so I don't really play video games as much because, like, I it tends to like tighten up from all the button moving and all that. Like with the joystick. Yeah, with the joy, Like if I go play an arcade, I can only play it for so long, or uh -huh. like. 
I'll play like uh, what's it called? Um, I, I don't know if you ever played Area Fifty One. Uh, it, yeah, that's super old school though. That's yeah, like, like almost eight bit, right? No, no, not even eight bit. It's just it's, it's an arcade yeah. like. But they have it since it's a shooter one. But even that, uh, like, no, yeah, different. But will mess my wrist up or uh, what? Are the, yeah, like Street Fighter. What about or Dance Mortal Dance Revolution Co- now? Dude, that actually could be something. I I tried it a couple of times. It's not the best that ever made if I give it a try. I've always been a big, like, I'm all, like now I'm kind of, like, trying. Now that my daughter's a little bit older and more into, like, video games, she's, uh, I'm trying to get her. I'm trying to find the Guitar Hero right now. I was just going to mention, because I played a Guitar Hero with my ne- nephew. But when it first came out, and he was amazing at it, and he's very, or at least at the time, he was very competitive. He was like, oh, well, play <laughs> Play guitar hero with me and i i just thought it was gonna be like a little like and he he like yeah, i was man, like i was like i'm same, done same <laughs> i was i'm like hey man like the best i could do is medium and just strum down like i was the worst at it and i and i knew how i i'm not i haven't practiced kept practicing guitar mm-hmm. but like yeah. you would you think, thought yeah you would think it'd be like that but it's not at all it's just no. it goes kind of by like feeling the buttons and so just muscle memory and stuff like that. I had a buddy who had gotten that game and he was just all on like he was on expert level like throwing the flailing the guitar around like he was just like a full on dude about it and then I have like a couple other friends who who uh, work at EA Sports and stuff at that time so they were like trying to you know they were always like gamers and I lot when I was skating a lot I lost a couple of friends to World of Warcraft yeah <laughs> That's been that whole Blizzard thing with I don't know if you're like Hong Kong and stuff if you've been following that at all. No, what? yeah. No. So you know, uh, there's a Hong Kong protest right now. They're trying to fight. Uh, Chinese has a um, Chinese government has a lot of restrictions and a lot of propaganda. Oh no on. way! I'm not an expert, so I'm going to totally ruin this. But basically, <laughs> um, because Hong Kong was a um, a kind of thing with with Britain for the longest, mm-hmm. they kind of it turned over to to china but they still have very hong kong is very westernized still so they kind of still have a a democracy kind of inclination um the real thing started with somebody got extradited and so um there was just it kind of finally was kind of the beginning of a breaking point of where china was was being very authoritarian about how they could treat people in hong kong yeah yeah so right now the protests have reached the level where like police are you know like they were using like the hong kong university as kind of the students were using it as like a a place to kind of create a a safe place to combat the the hong kong police Hmm. and it was down to like them using lasers there's like a face recognition thing where the chinese keep track of who's doing what so they started wearing masks and whoa um so so because of that whole fiasco there was um, certain, I think, uh, somebody at Blizzard or, or NBA, like, suddenly they started getting involved in saying, like, we're with Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And then they made people retract it because there's uh, so much money coming from Chinese um, people now playing World yeah, of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's NBA teams that go there that they, LeBron got into it. And so people are kind oh, of... I, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Okay, yeah. I heard there was some kind of stuff with LeBron doing, like, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's where it comes from. I, it, I didn't... I heard a lot of people dropped out of World of Warcraft because of that. No But way. not enough, because there's people that have just been playing it for 10 years. Dude, they're so... addicted to those yeah. things. I, like, yeah, like I said, we'd go over and we'd watch a bunch of, like, we're all movie nerds and skate nerds, you know, like... So we'd go over at his house. His house was like the meeting spot, you know? That was like the like the check-in, like basically like how fe- Facebook used to have a check-in. Also, like we would all like hang out right there. And, you know, if you see skateboards, we're out at his house. And uh, we'd all either go watch movies or we'd go skate somewhere. So he'd be like, yeah, man, uh, let's just go watch a movie. Let's go watch a skate video. Okay. All of us, all his friends. We're all watching skate video. He's in his room still, like, at World of Warcraft, just in there playing it, playing it and playing it. We're all, dude, like, we just spent the whole day watching skate videos and skating. <laughs> you weren't part of that at all, but we're at his house. Yeah. You know, he was a dude 
that we'd always hang out at his house. I have a friend who's his boyfriend is pretty much. It'll be like it's at this point where we're just like, oh, where's where is he? Oh, he's playing World of Warcraft. We're like, all right, you know. Yeah, you kind of just like, hey man, if that's what you want to do. You know, like, I, just kind of. I got into um, Final Fantasy fourteen. That's uh-huh. my MMO. I played World of Warcraft for like a couple months, and I just it was too. I think because it's so like there's such a steeped uh, community now that are like so high level and they they know how to do speed runs through dungeons so it was oh, really hard for me to get into to, keep up. to to do the new to as a new person to kind of like gear up and do all that but there's Final Fantasy 14's like it's more Japanese they're more like they kind of ease you into the MMO mm-hmm. so like as you go through so you don't have to deal with the same type of like you're ruining my game noob you know, oh, you still get those people, yeah, yeah. but it was like, yeah. That that reminds me of like my brother with uh, Call of Duty or like Star Wars, uh, Shadows of the Empire stuff, like Xbox stuff. Mm-hmm. So he does all that. Like last night, I was just watching him play like some kind of new Call of Duty or something. But that's crazy too. Like I wasn't, he, I was never really good at those kind of games. I just kind of watch everybody play or like Resident Evil. I'd be too scared of like. I, I'm like I remember my brothers playing that. Yeah, and I, I used to scare. And I was the just shit like, yeah, I'm just like I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I cursed. <laughs> um, I don't know, dude. I, there was this fun part that always creeped me out, where like the, where like you're like walking down the hallway, and then like the dogs break through the window, even though we all knew that was coming. It was like, always the one in the out. back of the wall that kind yeah, of. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the fact that those dogs were like zombie dogs and just like attacking you, and we we're all just like screaming in the living room, just like ah. Did you like the movies? The movies? I saw, I think I saw one and two and I was done with that. Oh, really? I like, yeah. I didn't see the, I think it was the last one, the Apocalypse one. But I followed it all the way. I think I just like Mila Jokovich, whatever her name is. I think she's a dope action hero. Oh, uh, okay. Actress. No, I Maybe. just, from from what I, like, I just remember, I remember watching one and two because that's the only Resident Evils that my friends would play. But other than that, I didn't really keep up. I like, you know, I like more like 80s, like, uh, Evil, Evil Dead, Ar- Army of Darkness, stuff like that. Like, just cheesy, cheesy, creepy movies. Chucky. Uh, what, I don't know what other one. You should <laughs> have said Halloween, of course. American Horror Story just did their, um, you're probably aware of the show, American Horror yeah, Story. Yeah, yeah, I know They're, the show. The one this season, 1984. Really? It, it was kind of like all those tropes. All oh, those, no like, way. No, no, no. Kind of smooshed them all together. Man, it's, it was actually okay. Yeah. It's just the show in general just gets so crazy because at first it feels like they have a story and then it just feels like they stayed up all night and did coke and finished the episode. <laughs> so you get to the end and you're like, what? what just happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That made no sense. Oh, man. There's so much good stuff out there. You, like, it kind of bugs me out because I, I, have, I finally have my own Netflix account for a while. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm paying. I'm, <laughs> Slow cat. Yeah, let's like. <laughs> so, dude, yeah, I don't have to take if we, anybody. If we had sound effects, we'd do like. Yeah, Whoa. I don't have to take anybody's, like, you know, password. I'm like, yeah, I can do it now. But now uh, Amazon Prime, which I've had forever. They have like, a lot they of good stuff on there. such good stuff on Amazon they Prime. They actually have the kind of catalog that Netflix used to have, where they'd have right. a lot of it. But the only problem with Amazon, and I, I'm pretty sure they've heard this over and over again, and they know it, and, you know, Bezos doesn't... He doesn't care about us, but yeah. <laughs> um, the 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 UI is terrible. The UI, you know, what like is that the, the interface, like the face, like how you how you find oh, how stuff. You it? Oh, I you know. Have, you have to. It's like digging the record re- crate. Yeah, you yeah, just you gotta to keep, keep like digging, going through. Keep digging through and like the way, top picks and stuff like that. Recently, yeah, I think it's tough, for sure. But I found a lot of great um, short films. Like I guess they have a lot of film festival stuff in there. Oh really? So I just I'm just like I, instead of you know having to go to. There's so much stuff to choose. I get anxiety, so I just always stick to the same things. And now with Disney Plus. Oh man, Disney Plus was a game changer right there. My buddy just got it, and man, they have so much. They have gold there. They have yeah. my uh, Darkwing Duck. They have all those like classic like TV shows that. They have old, like, 90s movies, like, heavyweights and stuff like that. My brother's showing his daughter um, Gargoyles. Yeah. Oh, I saw that, dude. I was yeah. like, oh, man. Channel 9. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude. <laughs> the DuckTales, Duck- Chippendale, yeah, dude. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Rescue Rangers, um, all that stuff, What else stuff, did dude. I miss? There was Gummy Bears, but that was actually the beginning of it, if I remember. Gummy Bears? I think that was called. I don't know more now. Yeah, it was, I think it was already past that. And Dang. Yeah, Darkwing Duck. and every All the Disney Channel stuff, I don't know about that, though. The, dude, like, I, the originals, like the Hannah Montana stuff. Oh, that I don't. I don't. 
I knew some of it, but my brother probably know that's more of his time. So I was like, okay, I can see that stuff. But dude, I just remember those cartoons were essential because those were the ones that led to like. Now it's getting more of like then after that those cartoons were done. You go to like Channel Five, and then after Channel Five, you go to Channel Eleven to watch like The Simpsons, Married with Children, all that other stuff. Like it gets, it gets pretty like older. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, no, this time jumping yesterday was like, you remember Married with Children? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who can't forget Al Bundy, man? <laughs> oh, pretty much everyone from that is done really good though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Moved on and done like other great projects. They've Which is weird because stuff. at the time it was seen as such a trashy, like they were like, these people are trashy. And it turned yeah. out that they were like, you know, people forget they were actors. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, not like, really no, those... That's just an act. That's, yeah. that's what made them good actors because that's mm. how they thought about them. I actually heard a really, so going, even going back to the podcast, um, interview with um, uh, Christina Applegate on RuPaul's podcast. Oh, and I didn't even it know was, RuPaul had one. That's oh, cool. yeah. It's called What's the Tea? I always, uh-huh. I always love talking to straight people, realizing that everything in the gay culture is kind of like we assume <laughs> that, yeah, we're, knows that we're it. interacting yeah, with no, each other. Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. thing with like Joe Rogan and MMA stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not on top of that. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. But. I, I honestly, until like I started listening, like I always like I knew about K2 and all that stuff before it became like UFC, but I didn't know too much about it. I would always watch like a lot of my friends that were into like like uh heavy like hardcore like punk music and stuff like that they would watch these videos of these like it was just fights like ring fights of like unmatched different weight classes that's what k2 was because it was in japan and stuff like that so they, they didn't regulate it as much as ufc at ufc has like classes of like weight classes and stuff like that as the k2 is just like Watch Butterbean. I don't know if you know who Butterbean no, is. He's like you could tell me. You never. Five hundred pound, huge man versus a small little dude. You know. So this like, is like like a WWF WWE. Yeah, but like that. the real, like, like they're like, really. That's real. Yeah. It's funny because yesterday I was telling my husband I was like I remember when I first went to a WWF taping and it just ruined the whole thing for me for real? it was it i guess we knew it was fake but i didn't know it was that fake and now in hindsight i think it was because i it was like a taping because it was like they did it they did a fight and then we just sat there and did nothing for a while and then they did a fight and it just really like it was like this sucks i went to raw's war at the staples center when i was a little i uh, i think i was my buddy told me he's like dude you have to join the, you have to join the Boy Scouts Club. You can get you can go to free Dodger games, free Staples Center games, and so we're like, yeah, let's. We were all in. We're like, yeah, man, free stuff. We're in it. You know, we couldn't afford to do that on our own. So we just whatever we could do to get free ins. That's that was us. So uh, yeah, I just remember going to Staples Center and saw Roswell because I was a big like WWF nerd when I was little. So. I used to love all that stuff too. That would, stuff would get me all into it. But yeah. So tell me was. again more about K two though. Like that. So that uh, are they just kind of be- beating each other into like ball dream? Pit? It was just a bunch of different fighters, like from different weight classes, just to show uh, it's MMA, like mixed martial arts. Right. But I'm seeing like so, E Honda versus Dalla. Exactly kind of, like, like that, like, like that. Yeah, like yeah. they'd come from across the you know different areas. They go to Japan. And, you know, Brock Lesnar, I think, was probably in it. Brock Lesnar's a humongous, like, white... Ho- like No, actually, like, Zangief. I don't know if... Okay, yeah, Like, yeah, like yeah. that. He looked like a real-life Zangief with, like, a big, like, Thor knife coming through his chest. And uh, he's just huge. I mean, you definitely know he got some, like, you know, uh, extra pills to get bigger. <laughs> so, what's it called? Uh, yeah, so... He, it's just a bunch of that, just like mismatch weights. Did you follow the see. the Conor McGregor fight? Because I know that was kind of yeah, a thing, that was a big he's thing. boxer and he yeah, went yeah. against MMA, right? Yeah, Floyd Mayweather versus uh, yeah versus uh, Conor McGregor, and I mean he, I think Conor McGregor did a good job, but I mean it it was on Floyd Mayweather's like you know like on his area, so that guy's just amazing even though he's like a lot of people say he's not that of a exciting boxer but the thing is he's like the best boxer because he knows how to protect himself he's not out to kill anybody he's just out to like you know where the guy's out take him down and that's what i read about connor out. he just wore connor out yeah he did yeah. i mean connor has a long like he, he can definitely he has a lot of stamina 
but at the end of the day it's just kind of like dude you you're you're in his world not not in UFC I'm sure if Mayweather went into UFC he'd get dude. rocked yeah dude yeah. and that's just money in the bank for for you know for Connor so but it's big reviews on mixed reviews for that stuff so I don't know it just depends I'm just from are you following because of podcasts or do you follow it fo- like? podcasts I definitely watch the fights and stuff All like right. that those were just essentials like and I think those were like just big things like that's history for sure yeah that's just something no, like, that was something that was you know something that is gonna like people are gonna talk about later right know, like Holyfield or or uh, what's his name um Mike Tyson and stuff like that. Dude. I mean, I could tell you, I can update you the big thing in, in the gay world is Drag Race UK finale is tonight or today at noon. They're going to play. I've so, watched clips of it. Dude, those things are awesome. RuPaul, well, I, I'm just, RuPaul's like, her energy is really fun. Like, I, like, I don't know. I think, uh, like, gay dudes are so, like, flamboyant ones. They're so funny. Like, I have, like, a gay cousin. And he's just super flamboyant. It's just funny, what like hanging out with them and how just extra they are about everything. Because then I've also known like some dudes that are just like guy dudes, but they're like gay and they're chill. You know, like they can just be like your total best friend and they're just like, yeah, dude, like, what's up? You know. But it's always fun to go with like the dude that's super party, because they just like they're on just some other like they're at a, like twelve when you're like at a five. You're just trying to hang out. They're like, come on, boys. And especially drag queens. Oh, like, man. Because they, they always say, like, they they talk about a lot, like, how, like, they're they're very shy out of drag, but the second they put on that dress, the makeup, and, like, it's they're just, It's a whole other like, thing. And they, they, they could say things that they wouldn't say. They can touch people like they wouldn't normally, because it's, really? like, when you're in drag, you kind of, yeah. they're like a clown. They don't feel like a real person. So people like, are going to be like, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's crazy. It's, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, I, I mean... That's good. I, I think it's way better. Like, I know back in the day, if, like, there was a bunch of dudes, like, if someone knew they gay, they'd get punked. I had a couple of friends that were gay, but at that time, we didn't care. Like, the people that I hung out with, we really didn't care. We weren't, like, homophobic or anything, but, you know, it definitely was a smaller amount of groups of people. And, um, but it wasn't ever, like, a big thing where, like, you know, I, I knew there was guys that would get punked for that, but... You know, we just let them be. We didn't really have anything. I mean, they're not bothering us, and they're just expressing how they feel, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I didn't. there wasn't a lot of gay people growing up for me when I was a teenager in West Covina. There was one guy that my dad would go, that guy's loaf- light in the loafers, walk like a tuck, talks like a duck kind of thing. No. And so, yeah. I'd be uh, so confused when if someone told me that kind of stuff. I'd be like, what does that even mean? He's a little ACDC. Those are all the things he's they used to say. He's a little ACDC? Yeah. Whoa, what, what does that, that even mean? It, it, it's supposed to mean like he's like, well, ACDC means like it's, it's supposed to mean like it fluctuates, the, yeah, but yeah. like knowing about electricity, that's not what that means. No, not at <laughs> all. AC is yeah. one current, DC is yeah, another exactly. current. That's all I was like, but, what? I guess it's supposed to mean, and really I've heard like some people like, Back 50, in the day, 50, bisexual maybe? maybe mean like it's kind of like oh, okay. flip both ways, but yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna be able to decode baby boomer right, 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 homophobia. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, like I and I didn't go to high school, junior high. I had home study, so oh, I was okay. totally cut off. Oh from all wow, that. yeah. But I'd always say like the biggest thing for for me probably was and um was like Will and Grace, and then Alan came out. So those were all you oh, know. There was yeah, RuPaul. Yeah, yeah. So it's great to be connected to kind of that RuPaul mm-hmm. era now. And yeah. she's like, you know, she the was thing. definitely out there like, hey, like, this is me. And that's cool. Like, you know, yeah. to me, like for a while, I thought like, uh, what's his name? That uh, from from the Bulls, uh, Chicago Bulls. Uh, Michael Jordan? Not Michael Jordan. I was like, why would I know this? No, no, no. Michael Jordan. <laughs> no, what's his name? Uh, Rodman. Oh, Dennis Rodman. Rodman, because yeah. he would hang out with, like, all kinds of eccentric people, you know? And I thought that was cool. Like, I'm like, yeah, dude, be weird. Be, like, the, you know, what, you don't have to wear a suit and tie. Like, people like that kind of made me feel, like, it's okay to get, like, I that's, like. Yeah, he's, like, he was heavily tattooed. Yeah, right? heavily tattooed, just weird dude, just, like, always bringing that shock factor. I think growing up, watching people like him or, like, you know, people that weren't like with the 
with that like tuxedo like you gotta wear this you gotta look this certain way you gotta be the football player like people like that i never really like was into like that's why i got really into the punk scene because punk skater kids and all that stuff we were just kind of vibing our we just did what we wanted to do and you know whatever we just get that shock factor out of people do you, are you still seeing that kind of punk attitude in tattoo i mean it comes up a lot how that you know there's mm-hmm. a certain era of skate punk um you know what's cool now it's just like a lot of people that are in my age like i had this i was uh in my when i was growing up i didn't know about cable tv until like one of my friends he was like the only white dude in the neighborhood <laughs> And he had cable, he had a cable box, and I was like, what's that? He's, he's like, oh, you want to watch Nickelodeon? I'm like, what's Nickelodeon? And he showed me what Nickelodeon was, and I was like, what? Like, there's a whole other channel that's cartoons all the time, and like, like a temp, uh, what's it called, Legends of the Hidden Temple, and I, I was just like, what is this stuff? And so, like, watching all that, like, you yeah. know, or watching uh, Rocco's Modern Life was another big thing. I was a big, uh, what's it called, Joe Murray fan because Rocco's Modern Life, man, that was just so, like it was, it was kind of like uh, um, Ren and Stimpy, but my like I loved uh, what's it called, Rocco's Modern Life because of just how weird it was. I anything that's super weird, I was really into because it was just like it creeped normal people out, and I wasn't like a, I wasn't, I knew I wasn't a normal dude, but I knew like I like weird stuff like. That attracted me more than just, it's like, oh, you like this? Like, I wouldn't go with the crowd and go with, like, the opposite of things. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, like, in tattooing, a lot of people, like, my age that do, like, designs and stuff, they kind of step, like, they warp it up and switch it up. It's been regurgitated over and over in different times and eras, or there's always a niche of weird people that do, like, weird things. But, like, in the time of tattooing where I was at, it was always, like, traditional pieces, but, like, darker, like, horror stuff and stuff like that so it was pretty cool like and i was just like i was really into that because it was just certain colors and tones to it and it's definitely not like you know definitely not getting that like i'm getting my last name on my back tattoo thing not that i'm dissing that but i'm just saying like it was just something different for me no i think anyone that's listening that would know like you know you're you're around a lot of like Mexican American, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. gang culture, yeah, yeah. tattoos. Yeah, so so that was, was what they did. So Cause that's what some of my, yeah. like my um, half uncles kind of had, like yeah, in they and had out the of rockers, jail. They had yeah, the thing on their stomach, yeah. and especially my same baby thing. brother did the same. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, same, like same thing. Like I, I grew up around a bunch of gangsters and stuff like that, and it was either like, well, what are you gonna do, man? Like, cause they saw me around the neighborhood, but I skated. You know, I was just like, I was hanging out with skater kids and stuff. So it's like. My friends were like really, really big gangsters, and they're like, "Oh, so what are you gonna do, man? Are you gonna wear baggy pants, or are you gonna listen to rocker music? You know, like what are you gonna do?" Like it's interesting because I had the same kind of thing where it was like either you were listening to like that old R and B soul, and you're into right. some low riders, and you're yeah, into yeah, yeah. Dickies. I like love Adidas all that stuff. I the, love all yeah. that stuff. I grew up listening to that stuff. And for me, like that was like I was I couldn't. I didn't want to get into that, but maybe because I was at the time a little bit closer to that, you know, if you wore blue or red, mm-hmm. you were going to be associated with the Bloods of Crips, right. and you, you, were, you know, if you were a brown person, mm-hmm. you were going to get, you could get shot, and it yeah. was at that time, like, there yeah, was just... Yeah, if you had a shaved head and stuff like that, you just, if you fit the bill, you're going to get hit up on, like, they'd run up on you on their cars, like, where are you from, full stuff like that. Luckily, I look Asian, but they're all like, dude, what are you, Chino of the crew or something like that? Like, I just grew up, like, I was lighter skinned than all of them. I looked Chinese. I was always getting picked on, you know, and I was, like, the only one amongst, like, all the little Mexican kids. And then they found out I was, like, Peruvian and talked Spanish. They would just, like, call me, like, Chino Cochino and all that stuff. They were just... I was just getting Wait, it from did, did, always. Does Chino and... offend you? Because in Spanish, it, it means Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, no, like... I, when I was younger, obviously, when you're younger, everything gets to you. But I think that's why growing up, it kind of, like, thickened me out to, like, really, like, take jokes. And, like, the kids that I grew up with, my best friends, the dudes that I still talk to since I was a young kid, we would just roast each other. It was just a big that's roast. That's was bringing up to somebody because, there, you know, there's all the cultural pro- appropriation yeah, things now. Man. And I'm like, I, at least in my family, 
like going back to like the gang names, you mm-hmm. know, they would call you Flaco, they would call you Gordo, mm-hmm. which is you know skinny, yeah, uh, fat. fat, yeah. They would call you um, Casper because you're really white. white, yeah. So it was kind of just you know smiley, all yeah. these things. That sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad, right? And it was just kind of like I, I think it was meant to toughen you up. If yeah. I think about how my grandma, yeah, it's just was, a certain way to do. It. Like that's how it was, and I just remember like you know like. You just had to have a tough skin about it, not let it show that it got to you, and you just gotta take it for what it is. It's just do you think if it, it, so, yeah. if you grew up right now, do you think you'd you'd be like, hey, that's racism? I think that's what happened, right? Mm-hmm. Like everyone's just so nice and like they want to nerf everything, so they'd be <laughs> like, oh man, that's I don't know if I feel comfortable about this. Like I was like, what are you talking about, man? And I just like so, some of the younger generation is like, dude, you guys grew up on like south park you guys know how like racist and like they just they shoot it at everybody man like they, they don't just care did really good did you ever even keeping up with the show no i no? haven't oh. but dude like oh when that stuff came out i thought it was hilarious like i was like dude there's nothing racist about this but everybody like there is a bunch of racist things that they're being said but I think a lot of people have said time, that because funny. it started at a time of being irreverent and making fun of PC culture, mm-hmm. it's getting away with things now that if it started right now, it probably would. Oh, you know, a lot of things, yeah, a lot. Even like, uh, like with like a bunch of like older movies when like uh, they would just hit people, like they would just hit women, like you know, like straight stuff that wouldn't like to the moon down. alice yeah. he's like yeah he's, like, dude, he's just he's threatening her threatening yeah. physical abuse to her yeah, yeah, domestic yeah. abuse yeah. i know and like to us it was just like oh you just laugh it off or certain things certain certain jokes that i see in older movies that i watch now that, that i like revisit and stuff they're just like oh wow like that's actually pretty racist of the things yeah, that they're I was, saying i was bringing up yesterday how um i have the movie jazz singer and it's the first talkie Mm-hmm. And I just can't bring myself to watch it because it's got blackface in it. And I was oh, like, it's going to make me, considering everything is, and maybe if Trump wasn't president and we didn't have so much extra racism right now, mm-hmm. maybe I'd be like, okay, I'm going to look past it. But it's right. just like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, Trump is, uh, I just think he's, he's, uh, what's it called? I, 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 was, I think he's just one big troll, dude. I, just the way he goes about everything, you know? I, but then again, I go with like the way comedians kind of go. Like everything is, uh, everything is, uh, everything is fair because you're a comedian. It's just fair game. I think if people saw it in that way, they wouldn't take him as serious. And then maybe a lot of the things that he says and stuff like that. He's also a dude from New York, so they're kind of more blunt and they're kind of more straightforward about things. And rich and entitled, right? And, and, and like, yeah, and all that a lot stuff. Of bad too, stuff. Like, you you gotta like I mean I think a lot of people that do like that say a lot of things about certain people they also need to, like feel culture like they need to see what other places are like because I remember at one time well like I said I I was tattooing on the road while my friends were playing gigs and stuff like they had never seen a like a fully tattooed Asian dude walk into the gas station they're just like what is that you know it was weird to them. And I'm from, like, California. I got to experience that. I, I Even when I was living down in uh, Orange County, like, I, I'm, like, obviously not white. I'm, like, Asian-looking, but I was Hispanic. So I remember going to a tattoo shop in, like, the early 2000s. And uh, this dude straight up just pulled up his shirt, had a huge swastika sign. Just be like, hey man, you're not welcome here. It's funny because we just talked about that yesterday with yeah. the way I said how, the, how the, there were so much Nazis down there. Dude, it, it was. And they actually had that what that one time, like at that point, they had a bunch of, they had Nazi crews that would, uh, what's it called, go around looking for people with no documents. Oh, and I they would that. go and beat them up. Yeah, man. There's always been an, a theory that, like, those type of people did join the police force, did join these different in, mm-hmm. things, to, in, and that's yeah. why we have this kind of... Um, Us against them mentality for the cops and stuff like that? Or yeah. they have, like, some kind of, like, hatred towards some people? Yeah, I mean, we've seen it. I remember I used to, like, my girlfriend at that time, when I was living down in Orange County, like, she she was uh, studying, uh, well, she's studying a... Uh, uh, police like um no she was studying you know, some she went to uci so she was a smarter chick 
and I would just sit in their classes and how they they would talk about how the police have this us against them mentality about things and like so whatever you were taught in the academy forget about it because in the streets is way different like this is how it is you know hmm. they try to like shake them out of that mentality and bring them into a new mentality which is like a gang mentality and it wasn't like you know like I mean back in the like early days like cops would do their own beat and they would know everybody they would know your parents and all that stuff you didn't need cops didn't really need to use pull out a gun or anything like that yeah when i was growing up it was like cops were kind of like a, a soldier that would put their lives on the line to protect somebody like that's what that serve and protect was about mm -hmm. but definitely around that era that um that uh Going back even to the LA riots and um, Rodney, well, I forget his Rodney name, King, Rodney King yeah. being bitten. That was definitely a training point where it was like, "Whoa, there's our, this thing is happening." This yeah, way. man. Well, um, let's try to maybe get back into tattoo for a bit. Not, right. not trying to shy away from from <laughs> controversy, um, but we we're kind of wrapping up. Um, so, uh, are there any? Do you have a dream tattoo you want to work on someday? Dream tattoo? I don't have a dream tattoo. I would just would like to have like a maybe like I think a, a happy day of me would be like a, a a good happy day would be like someone coming in for a traditional rose and then someone coming in for like a girl head like a traditional anything that's usually traditional like I love doing just because it's like straightforward you have a design you know you you could do whatever like a a, f a rose, a skull, and like maybe like a girl head, switch it up, do something, you know, black and gray or color, or even traditional Japanese, anything like that. Just three little, like, you know, hand sized tattoos a day would keep me like the happiest, you know. And that's yeah. what is that's just, you know, that and maybe going out for a little skate sesh and then grabbing a burger later. <laughs> I don't know, hanging out with my daughters later on at night. That, that that'd be the dream right there. But That's your dream. Yeah, you can do that till you die. I can see yeah. that every. Yeah, I can see that I can do that till the end. You know, I'm done with that. Sure. that that's my thing. Um, do you want to shout out to anybody at back at the shop? Oh, dude! All the guys I work with are amazing artists. Uh, Anthony, uh, Anthony, uh, George. Well, we have two Georges there. Oh yeah, that's right. Because when I had George here, he was like, George, I go by Mays. Yeah, Mays. You know, he's yeah. an amazing tattooer. Zeke, another traditional tattooer. He's always, man, that guy. He and he's very knowledgeable about tat. He's now he has a lot of knowledge about, you know, the older old timers. We say in tattooing because, you know, we got these guys, Philadelphia Eddie, all these dudes, uh, Tennessee Dave, like all these guys that kind of paved the way for tattooers that a lot of newer, new age tattooers really don't know much about, and they they kind of set the mood and. They said everything for us. Now now that everything's out in the open, you know, you can just Google search whatever you want to get, you know? And they, they, they're they the reason because we have all that at our hands now, you know? And those guys, we owe a lot to them. And in tattooing, you know, you you get as much as what you put in. And if you love your craft, that's, that's what counts, man. Because there's nothing better than having a job that you could just like, you know, every day doesn't even feel like work. So that's how I feel now, you know. That's why I said I went full circle. I did every kind of style of tattooing. And what, what works best for me is just doing whatever comes into the shop, even if it's not traditional, even if it's like a small little infinity symbol. Dude, I'm just making someone happy, and that's what I like. I like to see someone smile, enjoy what I enjoy doing, you know, sitting there talking the story, whatever it is. It's pretty fun. Cool, cool. Is there any promotions? Any? I know you guys are selling T-shirts and. Oh yeah, merch. we always got new. This is one of the newest shirts okay. we got out. We'll we'll get uh, a picture of it in a bit. Yeah, it's a tiger, and uh, what's it called? I guess Rance. Uh, recently, he went to Mexico and he hired a dude to do this design. Oh okay. I also have a design of mine that's coming up pretty soon for my birthday. Oh, so, happy birthday! Thank you. Oh, it's already yeah. from October, so it's kind of oh, late. Okay. <laughs> late design that I got turned in late, but it it got done. Um, but yeah, man, it was uh, yeah. We just try to push our we try to push our shop as much as possible. Yeah, and we all just try to have a good time. Great together. family there every time. Yeah, we're always there. 
throwing so, jokes, um, roasting each other. <laughs> Well, um, hey, Hector, thanks again for coming by the studio today. Yeah, man, thank you very uh, much. Remind us where we, where we can find you on Instagram. Oh, my, yeah, my Instagram handle is uh, heavy underscore shades. And, you know, you guys can always feel free to DM me. And I also have my number up. If Your you guys DMs want to, are open. Yeah, DMs are always open. <laughs> a dipstick, not so. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, also you can find the shop at Needle Pushers. And we'll have everything on kpcradio.com. Again, he's Hector Santos from Needle Pushers. Uh, thanks again for coming by the studio. Yeah, man, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Right, I want to thank you all for listening. I'm Anthony Sanchez.